Pregame.com. Welcome back to Pregame.tv. I'm your host, Marco D'Angelo, joined in studio, Ken Thompson, SportsX Radio here in Las Vegas, Yahoo Sports Radio all over the country. He's a man about town. And I got to tell you, have you seen, you know, I told you first about the billboard they got of you inside the Venetian. If you come in the valet at the right. Venetian and go up the, the hallway, there you are. Big. Well, the other night I'm driving, I turn off Koval. <laughs> I turn to go into the Venetian, and I'm at the light right before the Venetian, and I look up the side of the building. There's Ken Thompson, Sports X Radio. Thank God this one j just was didn't have your picture on this one. It was just because I couldn't take Ken Thompson up the side uh, of the Venetian. I, that's, I have, that's too I have much. not seen it, so uh, you know. You know, I, have, I don't go that way. You know, us locals, yeah. we go to the back roads and uh, avoid the strip when all, when all possible. But Koval on the back end. Uh, well, I got to uh, say, Koval there, you know. was always my go-to street to go that side of the, any of the casinos on that side of the strip. Now that they put the link in, Koval's not the go-to street. Not the go-to. No, definitely not. That's your tip from me if you're traveling in Vegas. Koval, not the way to go anymore. I got to tell you, though, before we get rolling, you're, you're looking pretty good and you know, very energetic coming off a, a poker stint over there at the Rio. And uh, what are you, 20 minutes away from going to day two? What the heck? I, I was. It was a very long day at the Venetian. Everybody knows. Oh, no, uh, the or, excuse me. You got Venetian on my there mind. Yes, at the Rio. World Series of Poker. They had yesterday. I'm waiting to hear the final uh, tally. But it was going to be either the third largest or second largest live tournament ever in Las Vegas. Uh, they didn't expect as many uh, entries as they got yesterday for it. They called it the Monster Stack. It was a $1,500 event. You started with 15000 in chips. Normally, the World Series events, you get three times the entry fee. So that mm -hmm. would have normally been 4,500 chips. Instead, you got 15,000 to start. And they came out of the woodwork yesterday. The prize pool was in excess of $10.5 million wow. yesterday. So nice for a $1,500 investment. I took my shot. I was 20 minutes away from advancing to day two when uh, I got it all in pre-flop with pocket tens against Ace King, the classic race. I was a 57% favorite, but didn't work out and here I am in casual attire today because I came straight from the Rio I stayed there last night and you know Ken sends out an email this is my buddy last night he says I'll send the games in the morning I got a headache and I'm like I wanted to text him back I just got kicked in the balls dude <laughs> man up and get the games out but hey, hey <laughs> next time be a little nicer to Lori she'll, she'll take care of you uh, we're looking at World Cup soccer and I got to tell you you know Soccer's not my forte. We're going to let it for you. But I, I got to say, I am officially, and I'm going to retire, 1-0 and in World Cup action. I'm going, to to I'm going to retire undefeated. I do Cirrus Radio like you do on Sunday nights, and I do it on Wednesday nights. In like two hours before the show, the program director sends me an email and says, we don't want a baseball play tonight. We need a World Cup soccer play. I said, you're kidding, right? <laughs> I, I don't do soccer. But you know what? And what I did when I went on with the, the game, Ken, is like, you know I'm a situational type guy. And, mm -hmm. you know, those kind of things work in every sport because they're situations. And I went with Germany on, um, unfortunately, my first soccer pick. I go against my, our home country. But, you know, hey, money is what pays the bills. It. And, yeah. and uh, I went with Germany. I just, it, I thought it was a horrible spot for the U.S. with the, uh, Germany having the extra day, the humidity and heat that they had to play in the U.S. team and such. Plus, Germany was coming off a very lackluster game that they played against uh, Ghana in the game before. So it was one of those situations, and uh, fortunately it came through, but a lot closer than we thought. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, the U.S. probably fortunate with the rain. Mm -hmm. I don't think they touched the ball more than once in the first nine and a half minutes. It looked like keep away, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, you play like when you're <laughs> when you're growing up and stuff in the, in the yard and keep away or monkey in the middle, and that's what it looked like it was crazy the u.s couldn't even touch the if ball in the monkey in the middle made oh, way too many, many times many times many <laughs> times yeah and it gets a little frustrating especially when you can't jump you know? it's like, but uh yeah they you know what they got there they got to the round of 16 and uh you know when you look at it they scored in the first 30 seconds against ghana and then they got the late header by brooks that really the difference and then portugal came to play against ghana which really helped the u.s and uh had that score been turned around ghana 2-1 over portugal we would have been out instead of in. So uh, fortunate that Ronaldo and company came to play yesterday. 
Absolutely. Well, we're going to take a look at, you're going to preview Costa Rica and Greece and um, tell us what we should need to know about this one. Well, again, two surprise teams to the Sweet 16. Second time the Costa Rica's made it in their history, uh, made it back in uh, 1990. And then uh, for Greece, this is just uh, a team that, boy, if you watch their first two games, you'd have thought this team has no chance because they can't score. And the two goals they end up getting, one off a penalty kick in stoppage time, which shocked the Ivory Coast. They had uh, really, Greece is, they're a very fortunate team. And they did this in the, in the Europe Cup back in 2004, where they just shocked everybody. Yes, they're a defensive-laden team. They can counter and score. But this is a team that, uh, quite frankly, doesn't deserve to be here based on the way that they played, uh, you know, their three group matches. Well, you know what? I think I have an idea which way you're going in this one, but you know what? Let's make it official. Okay, Let's do it. Free pick. Let's do it. Okay, and let's uh, let the cat right out of the bag. I am on Costa Rica. There is no doubt. I've watched all three of their matches. I, in fact, I've only missed a half of one game of all the World Cup. I enjoy it. When you get a spectacle like this that involves the whole world and soccer played at that level and then guys representing their country, you, you never know what's going to happen. You know, Uruguay, Luis Suarez, the Count Dracula of soccer. But uh, Costa Rica, minus 130 against Greece. I think it's a steal. Now that because we're in the knockout stage now, that means they just have to win the game. That'll count overtime, shootouts, all that stuff. So minus 130 to make 100, I think it's a, a low line, a very fair line, and I think it'll go up prior to game time. Now, the Greeks will get a lot of international support because they are one of these teams that people know more than Costa Rica. Everybody looks at Costa Rica as just a place with offshore books and parties, and that's pretty much it. But they are a pretty darn good team. They have Joel Campbell. Joel Campbell is a very solid player. He plays in the English Premier League, which you got to be top of the world to be playing in that league but Campbell plays for Arsenal one of the better teams he's been outstanding in their game against Italy and this was the telltale they beat Uruguay three to one in the first game but Uruguay played that game without Suarez but if you watch that game Costa Rica dominated they moved up and down against the South American squad and all three of their goals were beautiful goals so then they play Italy Italy a very disciplined team a good counter team but a team that usually takes a team like Costa Rica and dismantles them they couldn't do it and when Costa Rica got their goal and it was two minutes after Campbell got pulled down in the box. No call, a blatant miss. But again, that's Italy against Costa Rica, so you didn't get that call. But two minutes later, they were able to get a header from Ruiz, who's up to, uh, their captain, and they end up winning the game 1-0. Now, when they got the 1-0 lead, they pressed Italy. They didn't just sit back like England did against Italy. They kept pressing and pressing, and Italy really couldn't get the ball out of their own end for a good portion of the last 30 minutes when they were behind 1-0. That doesn't usually happen to the Italians. Enter Costa Rica, who went 2-0-1. They didn't need their last game against England, but they still got a draw out of it. They wanted to keep everybody yellow card free and make sure everybody was eligible for this round of 16. They draw Greece. They were actually preparing for Ivory Coast, who looked like they were going to be the number two team behind Colombia. But we'll see how the matchup works out. I don't think Greece has enough offense to stay with this Costa Rican team. And again, uh, Kaylor Navis, Navis, the uh, goaltender there for Costa Rica, one of the better goaltenders in the world. So I, I would have him in my top seven as far as in the world. And you can see teams like Costa Rica and Mexico with Ochoa really riding the hot goaltender right now. Uh, also a great story on Celso Borges. His dad was actually the coach of Panama back in the day. And when Costa Rica was playing Panama in the, uh, to qualify for the Olympics, uh, Borges actually missed a penalty kick against his dad's team, and it cost them from going to the Olympics. So he's sky high. He said he learned a lot, gained a lot of wisdom from that. Meanwhile, Coach Fernando Santos, 59-year-old Portuguese coach for Greece, Again, he's just a, a miracle worker with this team. They have some players, Samaras, who got the penalty kick against Ivory Coast, and he did it in stoppage time in the 92nd minute. That's the only reason Greece is here, because a 1-1 draw would have sent Ivory Coast. Instead, the Greeks got the 2-1 win. Again, but this team, outside of uh, Samaras and Karagounis, who's their captain, uh, there's not a lot of offense from this team. Yes, they'll counter. If they play solid D and they get it to penalty kicks, they have a shot. But I like Costa Rica. I think Costa Rica probably wins by two goals. I'm all over Costa Rica. Minus 130 to get to the Elite Eight. And this will be the first time for either country, uh, whoever gets to the Elite Eight. And we'll see what happens. And I know we use those college basketball terms. Sweet 16, Elite Eight. They don't do the same there. But I'm looking forward to this game. And I think Costa Rica is a decisive uh, favorite in my books. I, I would have made them minus 200. 
great stuff. And, you know, not only do you watch all of these games, but being the host of your radio show, you get a lot of experts from the Yahoo Sports Network that you get to interview mm -hmm. on a nightly basis, that this is all they do is live and breathe the World Cup in the soccer world. So you're getting to pick their brains every night, which is the combination of your own eyes and all of the information you're getting from your guests makes a deadly, con you know, combination for you and uh, kudos to you and that's you know something that you've got a huge edge on a lot of handicap I listen to these guys you're right they know all these players from all these countries Martin Rogers one of the best for Yahoo Sports on uh, Nipun Chopra he's outstanding world soccer talk dot com got that one right this and, way yeah there you go and, and, and then Bobby McMahon this guy with this oh. thick Scottish accent I mean when you get these guys on it's great because people they listen because they know it's a worldwide event and you start hearing the foreign accent you know these guys probably know all about their football or as we, as we call it here in America, soccer. There you go. Say that one guy's name again. Napoon Chopra. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, baby. That was a little inside joke for Monday night. Uh, that's it for this one, guys. We'll be back. Uh, we're going to look next. Uh, Mets at Pittsburgh. That's, I wonder whose free pick that's going to be. <laughs> pick, picking on my Mets again. I can yeah. just feel it. All right. We'll be right back with that one next, pregame.tv.